I divided our best practices in the three sections. First is the issue section in which we discuss why actually we need that best practice, why we need to follow that best practice. In the second section, we are going to discuss what is actually that best practice. And in the third section, that how we can implement that best practice. So let's get started. So our issue number one is that uh, we already discussed that state file is a JSON file. Most of the professionals know JSON and YAML, so it can be edited easily. That means you are actually altering with the actual state of infrastructure, which might give you an unexpected error or you may face some issue in the later point of stage. So this will impact your performance. You are compromising your security and the most important you are increasing your cost as well. So to resolve this issue, we need to follow our first best practice that is never ever manipulate the state file directly always manipulate it through the terraform commands so this is a very important best practice that's why i put it at the very first never ever manipulate it manually i have seen many of the professionals who have a lot of experience doing such mistakes and later it will impact uh, to their organization so never ever do that so how you can implement this best practice whenever you want to manipulate the terraform state file always use these two commands one is the terraform apply which we already see and for second is terraform state which is generally used for the advanced state management so apart from these two commands never ever use any other method to manipulate the state file I am saying so many times never ever that means it is a very important best practice. I hope you guys now understand it and you will always follow this best practice. Now let's move ahead to the second issue. As already discussed whenever we run the terraform apply command for the very first time uh, terraform creates the terraform state file but it creates locally on your machine. But here lies in our problem when you work in a real world organization you have to work in a team so if your team members are also working in it on you are also working on it then every team member have a different state file which again result into a conflicts and issues so what is the resolution of it that that we need the latest state file with every team member so uh, how we can do that here comes our second best practice which is to always set up a shared remote storage to store that state file. The best practices which I am showing currently is for the state file only. Remember in Terraform we generally deal with these two files. One is the Terraform state file. Second is Terraform scripts file. So currently we are talking about the best practices of Terraform state file. So here is our issue that we want the latest state file. And how we are going to deal with it? We have to set up a shared remote storage for it to store that state file. So that every team member can have the latest state file with them. So to implement this best practice, Terraform has a facility of backend configuration where we can define where we want to store our Terraform state file. So here you can see a snapshot of Terraform backend configuration where I use the example of AWS S3. So here you can see I just specify my bucket name, the path of the key and the region in which the bucket it is. By this way, you can tell Terraform that here I want to store my state file. So remember that we are only talking about the best practices of state file as of now. Later we discuss best practices of Terraform script as well. So here you can see Terraform supports only several available backends. So in case of AWS, it is using Amazon S3. In case of Azure, it is using Azure Blob Storage. In case of GCP, it is using Google Cloud Storage. Or in case if you don't want to use any of the cloud provider, you can use the facility of Terraform as well by using the Terraform Cloud. So by this way, you can set up a remote storage to store our state files so that every team member has the latest Terraform state file. So now comes to the next issue as now every team member has the latest state file but what will happen when other team members also try to execute at the very same time when you are trying it to. So this might result into the conflicts and the corruption of a state file. To resolve this issue we have to follow our next best practice which is to use the state locking feature. So what it actually does 
it lock your state file until all the changes in the state file got completed. So let's see how we can implement it. So we can configure this state locking in our storage backend. So how you can do that? You have to do nothing. Terraform will automatically log the state file if it is supported. What I mean by this supported, I will tell you in the last part. So in case of AWS, our backend is set up on S3 and it support state locking and consistency via DynamoDB. So as I told, all Terraform backend doesn't support state log. That's why I already told in the second point that it will automatically log state only if it is supported. So you have to choose your backend wisely. However, in the case of AWS, S3 support all the feature which Terraform has to offer in case of backend. That's why in the real world, we generally use AWS S3 as our backend configuration for Terraform. So now comes to the next issue. So we now have a storage location and we have logged that state file as well. But what will happen if that storage got corrupted or it get lost or you may overwrite that data with anything or somehow you loses your state file. Then what will happen? and how you can resolve this issue and what best practice you have to follow so you can overcome with these issues. So let's see. So our fourth best practice and the most important one is to backup your state file. So this is a very simple one but I have seen professionals not doing that. So you have to always take the backup of your state file. So to implement that we have to use the feature called versioning. You might heard in the S3 versioning so we just simply enable the S3 versioning so that uh, it can store the multiple version of your state file so that in case of a failure, we can revert back to the previous state whenever we want. So our next issue is more related to the real world while you are working practically with the Terraform because uh, in real world, we have multiple environments in our setup like production environment, non-production environment, testing environment, so what best practices one should follow when using Terraform in multiple environments? So the best practices say that we have to use one dedicated state file per environment. So best practices say we have to use one separate Terraform state file according to our environment and to use a separate backend configuration to store that Terraform state file. So do not ever use a single state file for every environment. Always use different state file for different environments. So as per our general organization setup, we have to work with the team and we need to share our Terraform script as well. Also, we need to back up our Terraform script so that we can recover it whenever any failover happens. So to deal with this issue, what we can do? we have to host our Terraform script in a Git repository. So basically we have to treat our Terraform script similar to our application code. It gives you a functionality of a code, so you have to treat it like that. By using the Git repository, it allows us to better collaborate with our team. It also provides the version control facility, so we can revert in the case of failure to any previous version. Also to use a separate Git repository, not your application Git repository. Also use a different Git repository per your environment because you don't want to put your all your coins at a single place. So we will not lose all the things at the same time. Now let's see some other best practices related to Terraform script. So as I already told, we have to treat our Terraform script as our application code and it should be properly tested and reviewed before you merge into the master branch of your uh, Terraform Git repository. And we have to use the proper automated CI-CD methods uh, like we have to build a pipeline and we have to properly release infrastructure and we should uh, set up a proper approval to up that uh, pipeline and we have to set up it with the proper permissions. So let's see what we have learned till now from the best practices of Terraform state file. So first is we have to only use Terraform commands to manipulate the state file. Not any other method other than the Terraform commands. Second is to use a shared location. So we will use a shared remote location to store our state file so we can collaborate in a team. Third one is state locking. State locking will allow to log your file until all the changes in it are completed. So it will result in the better team collaboration. 
the last and the important one is backup so we can enable the file versioning for our backup so these are the best practices you can use while using the terraform so i hope you understand all the terraform best practices and if still you have doubt you can ask me in the comment section or you can join our telegram group i will provide the link in the description also subscribe the channel so you will be notified with the every single video i updated on my channel thanks for watching this video till the end bye